Uh, there's a, uh, a famous quote by Hippocrates uh, that has been cited saying, death sits in the colon, and that also bad digestion is the root of all evil, which will naturally happen when you are chronically stressed. I'm sure many of you have gone through seasons in your life, if not right now, when you're in a state of chronic stress, and the brain-gut connection uh, will show more than ever with this type of inflammation. What can happen to a lot of people uh, is they're getting frequent bloating and gas and distension as the day continues on. A question I always get asked too is, what do you use for a probiotic? The one that I have listed. All right, guys, well, welcome to a special episode of Kingdom Built Podcast. Due to popular demand, uh, that I put out a question on social media. So many people are interested in gut health, and uh, by good reason, they should be. Uh, there's a, uh, a famous quote by Hippocrates uh, that has been cited saying, death sits in the colon, and that also bad digestion is the root of all evil. Um, and it's true with a lot of things that, uh, you know, your gut microbiome, your GI health as a whole, uh, irregardless if you are an athlete, a competitor in the fitness industry, or just an everyday person that just wants to feel good uh, and be able to live a long, healthy lifestyle down from uh, avoiding neurodegenerative diseases, cardiovascular, heart health diseases, all of these issues that uh, is running rampant in today's society and world, we have to make sure that we are fixated on proper GI health. So if you guys didn't know, in 2012, I was actually diagnosed with ulcerative proctitis, which is an irritable bowel disease. And with that disease, uh, it can turn into ulcerative colitis, Crohn's, and uh, all sorts of issues. So I had to learn at a very early age through my competitive career on how to fix and navigate the types of foods that I need to be eating, along with keeping systemic inflammation as low as possible, uh, which can be really induced by chronic levels of high stress, uh, which is one of the biggest reasons why I had to quit my bodybuilding career, uh, which I am uh, very fortunate and happy about today. Uh, it was a, definitely a gift and a curse at the same time. Uh, so what I mean by that is I'll always live with the irritable bowel disease as an autoimmune disease. However, I have learned how to keep that in remission with doing a lot of these practices that we will talk about today, we'll go over today, and uh, I will try to keep this brief, and I will try to break down all of these topics and subjects that are very prevalent in today's age, down to the fitness industry uh, specialist in the forms of bodybuilding, uh, competitive fitness, CrossFit, uh, whatever the case is, and you're eating a copious amount of food to not only perform your best, recover, uh, but at the same time, grow lean muscle tissue and burn fat all the way down to your everyday uh, workaholic that is chronically stressed, what's missing in their, the, what is missing in their lifestyle as a whole, what's missing in uh, supplementation or food choices and selection, so on and so forth. So guys, I took a lot of notes for this because you guys were really uh, hounding me on uh, gut health and what do we do? Uh, with these issues because there's a lot of uh, information out there and there's definitely some good stuff and there's definitely a lot of uh, bad stuff as well. So I just kind of want to take you guys through my notes and what I have here for you guys today so that I can educate you formally on how we can go about uh, fixing the GI depending on what's going on. Now, we're not going to touch every subject. This is definitely going to be a series that we will get into a multiple series and different facets of how we heal from systemic inflammation caused by uh, something in the form of leaky gut, aka intestinal permeability. So really, at the end of the day, to break this down in a simplistic way, intestinal permeability, you have these tight junctions in, uh, in the intestinal tract. And basically what will happen over a period of time if you're suffering from a higher release of zonulin, how this happens through chronic stress, how this can happen from bad food choices, binge drinking alcohol, uh, and we'll go down some of the lists of uh, you know how this can occur. The tight junctions will basically disintegrate to an extent and allow all these bad uh, invaders specifically to come in. And what happens over time is we are getting neurodegenerative diseases, we are getting cardiovascular diseases, 
Uh, we're getting all sorts of systemic inflammation that is happening all over, which can also transfer again into an inflammatory bowel disease, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, which has kind of been a uh, hot topic a lot in the industry and online on social media as a whole. How do you heal from it? And basically, what can happen over a period of time when these tight junctions disintegrate and allow these bad invaders to come in. So LPS being a lipopolysaccharide uh, binds to lipoprotein and plays a role in neurodegenerative diseases. So that's basically essentially what will happen when you have the tight junctions uh, open up and the LPS uh, lipopolysaccharides, which basically will help transfer lipids throughout the system, which will control VDL, LDL, and small DL, LDL. So the lipoproteins to the LPS, which will bind together, and it will recycle and lower systemic inflammation overall as a whole. So these are issues which can directly correlate with APO B proteins. So you're seeing all of these things happen on the lipid aspect of the body, and this will specifically affect the cardiovascular system. Then we go into what can basically lower uh, your brain functionality, cognition, what creates, you know, anything from uh, Alzheimer's, any 50%, actually, they've done studies, 50% of dementia diseases will directly correlate with the blood brain barrier being thinned out, broken down, and that correlates into intestinal permeability. So these are all directly correlated cardiovascular health into neurodegenerative diseases. So again, very important that we are taking care of our GI gut microbiome health as a whole. And we're making sure that we are not facing any of these issues that are falling into place with, you know, higher elevated levels of LPS, which will naturally happen when you are chronically stressed. I'm sure many of you have gone through seasons in your life, if not right now, where you're in a state of chronic stress in the brain gut connection uh, will show more than ever with this type of inflammation, aka GI issues as a whole, which will develop through corticotropin. Corticotropin is a polypeptide hormone in which large amounts of corticotropin are released in response to any form of stress. So chronic high stress, corticotropin stimulates secretion of adrenal corticoids. And those are glucocorticoids, essentially, right? It's a lot to unravel and get, get out of your tongue from the adrenal gland, which will release protease, and that will degrade the proteins that will break down the tight junctions in the GI, which we talked about. And that will allow food antigens in, that will allow LPS at higher levels to come in, and that will allow bad bacteria to leak in as well. Hence why psychological distress determines overall gut health, right? And there is a complete correlation to the vagus nerve and your GI, right? So basically, essentially what happens is vagus nerve can help control, I'm going to say this in a very simplistic way, your parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous state. Parasympathetic being rest and digest, sympathetic being fight or flight, so for you competitors out there that know on show day or the day before the show that are getting chronically stressed and overthinking, you will 100% shut down your digestive system and get backed up, which is going to not only cause a form of water retention to happen, but also, of course, distension on stage. So you do yourself a very big disservice being in a chronic state of fight or flight sympathetic nervous system. And what you need to do is shift over to the parasympathetic nervous system. Very important. All right, so we basically broke down really quickly and very, very briefly uh, how this affects the cardiovascular system, how it affects the brain, where does it stem from, a lot of chronic stress, bad food choices. If you drink a lot of alcohol as well, you're also going to increase the LPS as well. And we went over again, for those that didn't hear, the LPS is lipopolysaccharides. So very, very important for overall health to make sure that we are controlling all these areas and facets of our life. So we can get into a few things because after we talked about, you know, a basic simple breakdown of a hot topic, uh, a hot word, which is intestinal permeability, let's understand how we can fix it. Because if we don't know what we're doing 
and how we can fix it. And I took down some notes on how we can go about fixing it. One of the main things is increasing the production of butyrate in your GI. Very, very important. And I'm going to go over how we can do that. Uh, because listen, guys, we can take a lot of supplements to try to combat these issues, but it's always going to start with the food selection along with stress management as well. So stress management and food selection. Now, food selection is very important to everybody. We know here in America, our soils are extremely depleted, which is causing a whole host of mineral deficiencies and vitamin deficiencies all over, and we're not meeting what we need as a whole in our micronutrients for our body to run uh, as efficient as possible. So that's where supplementation comes in of those uh, you know, micronutrients, you know, and minerals, copper, zinc, iodine, selenium, you know, magnesium. We talked about all this stuff in the last uh, podcast that I did on optimizing every facet of your life. So I took down some notes here uh, and I want to kind of go over what these notes uh, stated just to kind of give you guys a brief rundown and synopsis of how can we go about fixing these issues, right? So what can happen to a lot of people uh, is they're getting frequent bloating and gas and distension as the day continues on. You know, you wake up with a flat stomach and you continue to eat meal one, two, three, et cetera, et cetera. And every meal and intake of fluid, you're just getting more distended and more bloated. Typically a classic sign of SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth in the production of two main gases, hydrogen and methane. So, um, they will give you a lactulose test, which I'm not a big fan of. I've actually seen these tests with lactulose cause SIBO to happen. And you can get a lot of false readings by doing lactulose tests. Now, if you've done it before and you've had success, listen, I'm not totally downgrading it. I'm just going by experience and anecdote of what I've seen. The lactulose test actually cause people to, uh, actually get worse to be quite honest with you. Um, so what are the causes? Food protein, food allergies, uh, chemicals. Uh, there's a lot of chemicals, uh, not only outside in the air, but also in our homes with different pesticides and herbicides that we're using. And, uh, you know, people talk about gluten. The, the main problem is glyphosate. So eating a, a diet that is high in glyphosate intake, Roundup, is definitely going to cause a systemic inflammatory response. You may not feel it now. Maybe you've been doing it for a couple years. Believe me when I tell you, eventually it will catch up to you in these other areas that we spoke about in the very beginning of the video. Overuse of antibiotics, a classic one. Autoimmune disease, we talked about Crohn's, colitis, um, you know, ulcerative proctitis. So irritable bowel diseases, 100%. Chronic stress and post-traumatic stress as well. Obviously, again, being in a state of sympathetic fight or flight on a consistent basis is going to cause you a whole hoist of GI issues all over. Low stomach acid, too low of stomach acid. A lot of people think when they take a proton pump inhibitor, a PPI, that their stomach acid is too high. Usually, it's the opposite. Uh, and usually, all they're doing is exacerbating the problem. And when you have low stomach acid, you're not actually breaking these proteins down in a proper manner for digestion and utilization into the cell. And then when you take a PPI on top of that, you're already magnesium deficient. You're already B12 deficient. You're getting all these issues of thinning of the hair, the skin, the nails. All these issues are happening because of low stomach acidity. When you take those PPIs, you get some instant relief, but you're exacerbating the problem in a long-term arena, an issue for lack of a better term. So, so the IgGE and IgA test is also a good tool mechanism to use to see what kind of response you are getting from the foods that you're eating. So what do we do? How do we fix this? How do we do this in a simplistic manner without getting on a podcast or watching a video for two hours and just giving you way too much information that's going to essentially put you into analysis paralysis? Um, some of the notes that I took down, uh, number one, I created Gut Revival by Cement Supps, which you can find at cementfactory.com. Promo code CEMENT10 off your first order. Cheap plug, guys. Had to do it. Because uh, this is absolutely a beautiful, wonderful product that I have been developing for many years that are consisting of things that will help these issues. One being Prefer Pro. 
Pre for Pro is the leading technology in prebiotics. Our friends at Deerland, they did a they did a study at Colorado State University, a clinical controlled study uh, that showed individuals using just a probiotic and individuals using a probiotic with the prebiotic Pre for Pro. Pre for Pro works in phages. And the best way for me to break that down in layman's terms is it will get into your GI It'll latch onto the bad bacteria, the bad invaders, and get them out of the way so that the nutrients can come in and actually feed for good gut bacteria, feed your GI what it needs. Uh, And along with that, we put in resistant starches. And in resistant starches, we have something beautiful called butyrate. We talked about butyrate earlier. So in the form of green banana, or if you cook a potato, you put it in the fridge, and it creates a resistant starch to be able to produce more butyrate in the stomach. So butyrate is a phenomenal way to really help with intestinal permeability. Uh, so gut revival, many other ingredients in there. I'm not going to go through all of them. We have all that stuff on our Instagram page and our website as well as mine as well. Uh, if I'm going to use any other type of supplements, I have Mastic Gum listed. Mastic Gum, easiest way, you go on uh, Amazon, buy the Jaro's formulation. Mastic Gum is, is phenomenal also for H. pylori, Helicobacter pylori. Um, we got antimicrobials uh oregano, garlic, berberine, caprylic acid. I love using caprylic acid as well. Uh, Extra virgin coconut oil is very high in caprylic acid. So all great things that we can throw in there. And then, you know, of course, a question I always get asked too is what do you use for a probiotic? The one that I have listed is a Saccharomyces boulardii. Uh, Very good in actually healing these issues that we're talking about specifically, especially if it's induced by high antibiotic usage. And when my clients and athletes are on antibiotics, it's actually the only probiotic that I have them use at the same time. You could also be uh, battling a histamine um, reaction and response, you know, so you have an intolerance to histamines. So a DAO supplement and quercetin are phenomenal for those histamine intolerances as well. So just real quick, brief overview of intestinal permeability, leaky gut, which again, we can start getting into the other irritable bowel diseases, the ulcerative proctitis, the colitis, the Crohn's, the small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, Helicobacter pylori, uh, all these things that can cause issues and continued issues over time will eventually affect you in a cardiovascular health arena and also a neurodegenerative disease arena. Again, 50% of dementia diseases, including Alzheimer's, will start from intestinal permeability because we are thinning out that blood-brain barrier. So guys, pay attention to these little things. Over time, it can turn into a very big problem. Don't just put a Band-Aid on a huge gash when it comes to overall gut health. We need to make sure we're paying attention to everything that we are doing to control what's going on in the gut. Because just like Hippocrates said, Death starts in the colon. And the root of all evil, when it comes to health, is going to be with bad digestion. It's a miserable life having bad digestion, being bloated, being gassy, having acid reflux and GERD. And again, guys, like I said, this is a real quick brief synopsis rundown, part one. We're going to do a lot of volumes going forward, quick episodes, throwing a lot of information at you. So if you guys have any questions uh, or comments, leave them down in the comment section. Please make sure that you hit subscribe and the bell notification uh, when we drop a new video on Kingdom Built because there's so much more to come, guys. We have an interview next week. Uh, You guys are going to be stoked and pumped up just like I am when you see it posted. I'm really excited to have this guy on. It's going to be awesome. So there you go. Intestinal permeability. How do we fix it? What are the causes? What does it do? And uh, let's get after it, guys. We need our gut health. We need to stay healthy starting in the colon. That's where the life starts with everything. It's your second brain. Take care of it. It'll take care of you. God bless, guys.